significant day in Washington with the Supreme Court rejecting affirmative action at U.S. colleges. A ruling stated that race-conscious admissions programs, both at Harvard, a private university, and the public university, University of North Carolina, are unconstitutional. And the decision could have reverberations for millions of Americans, as well as for national politics, and prompted an immediate response from the president. I know today's court decision is a severe disappointment to so many people, including me. But we cannot let the decision be a permanent setback for the country. We need to keep an open door of opportunities. For more on this, Nicole Killian and Ed O'Keefe join us. Nicole is a CBS News congressional correspondent. Ed is CBS News' senior White House and political correspondent. Ed, can uh, we begin with you over at the White House? President Biden was just on MSNBC. I'd like to listen to that, especially what he said about packing the Supreme Court and whether Democrats should move forward. Let's listen. It's done more to unravel basic rights and basic decisions than any court in recent history. And uh, that's what I meant by not normal. It's, it's, it's gone out of its way to, I mean, for example, take a look at overruling Roe v. Wade. Take a look at what the decision today. Take a look at how it's, uh, how it's ruled on a number of issues that are, have been precedent for 50, 60 years sometimes. Ed, so that was the president talking about why he used the phrase, this is not a normal court, when asked by a reporter earlier today if the court is a rogue court. He also said in that interview that he doesn't necessarily want to move toward expanding the Supreme Court or packing the Supreme Court, as some Democrats have called for. So it raises the question over at the White House, what next? Well, what next is you can now run against the Supreme Court as currently seated and is currently situated and make the argument that you've got to get a president who's a Democrat and a Democratic Senate back in place after 2024 to ensure that when the next vacancies come up, and there are some expected in the coming years, as certain justices age out, uh, that, that they will be appointed by Democratic justices. But uh, you saw the president today sharply criticize this. The vice president had an appearance in New Orleans as well, making a similar argument that this goes against uh, decades of precedents uh, and is obviously distressing to many in the Democratic Party's base of support. But we should point out, Recent CBS News poll, 53% of Americans say that they support affirmative action, but just 30% say on the issue of college race-based admissions programs, only 30% of Americans support doing so. So the White House today, in laying out sort of how it goes forward, laid out a, a series of suggestions to colleges and universities that they could adopt that, in essence, is, you know, keep to what the Supreme Court was suggesting, that race can be a factor but cannot be a factor the way it was at Harvard and the University of North Carolina, in that you take it as part of a holistic look at an applicant's life experience, what they maybe overcame to get to the point where they can apply to that college. And oh, by the way, what, what is their race? The way Harvard had done it, it was, you know, people who were eligible to apply, applied, and then reviewers looked at a series of things, your grades, uh, other life experiences, and then what race are you? And that was where the Supreme Court was saying you can't do that anymore. So the president today saying, look, it should continue to be something colleges and universities think about, um, and it has to be something that Democrats, of course, push for. And we will see this White House and certainly congressional Democrats say it's why you got to keep Democrats in charge of Congress should Supreme Court vacancies come up. So that's one response is to make a push and to make recommendations. But what about on policy, Nicole? Take us inside Capitol Hill and the possible response there in terms of legislation and anything else? Yeah, well, that is the question. Obviously, as you know, Congress is out on a two-week recess for the July 4th holiday, so there's not really much they can do in the short term. Uh, but certainly, as far as Democrats are concerned, it is something that they're starting to discuss amongst our, themselves. Of course, we heard earlier today from the chair of the Congressional Black Caucus, Stephen Horsford. Let's take a listen to what he had to say. I truly condemn uh, the decision by the majority of uh, conservative members of the U.S. Supreme Court. Uh, they have rolled back 45 years of precedent uh, in taking race uh, conscious preference into uh, consideration as one uh, of many factors in accepting a student. 
Now, he really, as far as reforms, just kind of pointed to the Senate saying, well, maybe Leader Schumer can look at some uh, potential reforms there. But I did just get off a of call with members of the Congressional Black Caucus, members of the Congressional Hispanic Caucus, and uh, members of KPAC, which represents uh, those AAPI lawmakers. And so they did want to present a united front, and they did talk about some other uh, mechanisms. One thing that was interesting is that uh, Congressman Bobby Scott, who's a ranking member on the House Education and Workforce Committee, said, you know, this is going to be tricky. It's going to be tough because there's really no, you know, the Supreme Court didn't strike down a statutory decision. So trying to make a statutory fix really isn't possible for Congress. And so some of the things they talked about, for instance, is really holding the attorney general uh, to account, for instance, to make sure that if there are cases where there is discrimination, to make sure that those are challenged, to make sure that there continues to be outreach to underserved communities, whether that's through the Department of Education, making sure, holding, you know, these colleges and universities their feet to the fire to make sure that they are still making uh, those steps and making those inroads uh, with communities of color. Uh, one thing that they also brought up, uh, which I thought was interesting, which we've heard a lot today, is this notion of ending legacy-based admissions. You know, many Democrats arguing, well, how is it fair to strike down a decision like this, but yet stand policies where people whose parents have gone to a college or university or who are major donors to a university, those folks can still get in in significant percentages. So whether or not Congress can address that part of the equation, I think remains to be seen. But those are some of the ideas that at least some congressional Democrats are kicking around. Let's go back to the White House and listen to what Vice President Harris had to say today. The disappointment is because this is now a moment where the court has not fully understand the importance of equal opportunity for the people of our country. Ed, when you're talking to your sources inside the White House, how are they evaluating the dissents by Justice Ketanji Brown Jackson? How are they looking at the arguments laid out by the more liberal side of the court as they formulate their own rhetoric and message for the future? Well, clearly on her flight to New Orleans, the vice president read the Jackson dissent uh, because she was citing it in that event there in New Orleans uh, at the Essence, Fence, uh, Essence Fest uh, and, and said it should be read closely by those who are concerned about what happened today. Um, th this is a White House that we know right after the ruling this morning was announced, uh, had the president, uh, the White House counsel and other aides closely reading through not only the full opinion, but the dissents, including what Justice Jackson wrote, uh, to get a better sense, especially and most immediately, of whether this was something that just applied narrowly to colleges and universities or had the potential to have affected affirmative action writ large across society. Uh, generally, it looks like it was more related to just education issues, uh, but there is, of course, concern that one day soon other cases could be brought that chip away further at affirmative action, which, as the president called out, has, has been in place for more than 40 years. So, uh, yes, they, they, they are certainly aware of and embracing what Justice Jackson said. Ed, uh, of course, she was put on the court by the president. And uh, speaking of bracing, it's only Thursday. What's the White House bracing for now in terms of uh, the upcoming student loans decision? Yeah, that is the other one they've been preparing for. And we know that the Education Department and the White House have been basically playing out the various legal scenarios and then how they could respond through executive action or clarifications to schools across the country. In the case of the Student Loan Forgiveness Program, remember this was put in place last year. The president himself had expressed reservations about doing this, concerned about the legality of it, but went with it because, of course, the liberal wing of the Democratic Party was pushing him to do it, even though he was pushing Congress to do it. So tomorrow, once this ruling comes down, look for them uh, to provide clarification on what would be next should the program get struck down, although the White House has been pretty confident publicly and privately in our conversations with them that they believe those that brought the suit don't necessarily have standing to do so, and so at least part of it may ultimately survive. We'll see, because we've seen in a few different cases brought by either Republican state governments or conservative organizations in recent days that the Supreme Court has been calling them out for not having legal right to sue. Uh, in this case, the White House is arguing they believe that state governments that did so, the Republican-backed ones, might not have total standing to have looked into it. But they're ready for it. And that is a change also, we should point out, from last year when, of course, remember, the Dobbs decision came down and abortion rights were struck. The White House was 
faulted for appearing to be flat-footed and caught off guard and for taking several days, if not weeks, to really come up with a response both in a policy and political way. Mm -hmm. This time, we know they've been preparing for weeks on both ends, uh, anticipating these rulings, knowing that they have a big effect on the base of the Democratic Party, minorities, right. college students, uh, and, and people who you know may live paycheck to paycheck. And real quickly, Nicole, we've, we're going to hear from a top Democrat in a moment here, uh, but the Republicans, what's their response? Is it mostly echoing the, the chief justice? I mean, for the most part, yes. You know, many Republicans say that this is a welcome victory. Mitch McConnell, Senate Minority Leader, saying that this is a step that has long been overdue. Uh, but that being said, in terms of next steps for Republicans, you know, many of them have been critical of DEI programs, for instance, within the federal government. So legislatively, will they start taking aim at those? We'll be watching for that. Nicole Killian, Ed O'Keefe, thank you so much.